Indeed, I know that you're a woman of beautiful countenance. By the way, she was 70-something years old when he said that. And she was. The Bible says she was a, a gorgeous, beautiful woman at the age of 70. So much so, he says this in verse 12, Therefore it will happen when the Egyptians see you that they will say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will let you live. Now this is the strangest thing you've ever seen. Next. Please say that you are my sister. This is Abraham saying this to his wife. When they come to kidnap you, they're going to kill me if they know I'm your husband. So I need you to, I need you to propagate a, a lie here for my sake. I want, you, I want you to see as holy and as mighty and as awesome as Abraham was, his name, his literal name means father. The book of Hebrews, the, Hebrews 11, the hall of fame calls Abraham the father of our faith. But I want you to see the other side. The Bible is a brutally truthful book, and it doesn't just give us the successes of people. It shows us in their weakest, worst moments. He's having one. Please say that you're my sister. Listen, that it may be well with me for your sake. <laughs> and that I may live because of you. And it was when Abram came into Egypt, the Egyptians saw the woman that she was very beautiful. And I won't take time to read. We'll stop right there and I'll sum it up in a minute. But the very thing he predicted happens. Abraham is the most, one of the most, if not the most significant men. He certainly is one of the most significant men in the history of the world. And I want you to see patterns. I want you to see cycles. I want you to see something that maybe you've never seen in this, that in our families, the old saying that came from the 1600s, like father, like son, like mother, like daughter, there are traits. And we're not here to beat up men this morning. We're here to build up men. This church is about building up men. And I want to touch some things today of what are you passing on and what will outlive you? Because God has a plan for our families in Genesis 12. The text said that there was a famine where they were, and in fear, Abraham makes a decision. Every time Abraham makes a decision in faith, it's a good decision. Every time Abraham makes a decision in fear, I'm afraid and I'm panicking and I'm going to do this and I haven't prayed about it. I haven't asked God about it. I haven't, I'm just under pressure and we got to do something. The famine's hitting. Everything's drying up. We're going to go to Egypt. Did he ask God? No. Did he pray about it? No. Did he, did he seek God's counsel? No. He made major decisions in life out of fear, not out of faith. And when he did, they were disastrous. And so he he takes his wife to Egypt, and just like he predicted, the Egyptian princes saw his wife, how gorgeous she was. They went to Pharaoh, and they said, you want this woman in your harem. And when they come to take her, he says, now, honey, I've got this great idea. I know you love me, and I know you don't want to see me suffer and any harm come to me. So I want you to tell them when they come that you are my sister. And I'm going to tell them that you are my sister. That it may go well with me. And you'll become a part of an evil Pharaoh's harem. He's going to abuse you. He's going to do all kinds of things to you. But take one for the team. It's going to be fine. I'll be okay. I'm going to really miss you. How many of you know this man needs some marriage counseling right here? <laughs> that my life may be spared for your sake. Talk about selfishness. If I offered Sharice up to somebody to make myself safe, she would stab me in the liver with a knife. She, she, would, <laughs> she, would, she would say, you don't need to fear him. You need to fear me. I will... I will cut you. I will hurt you. 
She would, I cannot imagine this situation. But even crazier than that, I cannot imagine him doing it again. But you're not watching. I want you to see cycles now. Cycles that start occurring. Once you let the enemy into the family, it's a cycle. And I'm going to give you the bad news first, and then I'm going to give you the good news. Then you go to Genesis chapter 20. It's 20 years later. And Abram said of Sarah, his wife, it's the old switcheroo. I'm going to tell them you're my sister. They're going to come and they're going to say you're beautiful. And I want you to go along with the secret little lie. And he does it again. You would think that they would learn. But he's a man. And that's what men do. You would think they would learn the first time. We had four daughters, Courtney, Carissa, Caroline, Connor, and then Drake came along. And it seemed like all the time Sharice would ask me about Drake. She knew all about, she had a PhD in what girls do, but she knew nothing about what boys do. And she would say, is that normal for him to do that? Is that normal? He, <laughs> I won't say all the things. That, I, I, was, I would say, well, is that normal? He, he, he'd just be out in the yard. He'd just start peeing. Just, just pee. <laughs> he'd be walking down the mall, peeing a plant. Just, I said, that's what boys do. That's what men would do if they wouldn't get arrested. It's just something about it that is very uh, manly or freeing. And that's how Adam did. And then when we come of age, we have to stop. But that's why we start hunting, so that we can go back out in the woods and do it again. It's just what men do. Leave us alone. We don't want to be like you. <laughs> and I want you to watch this, though. Watch God's amazing grace. This guy does the same thing over, and he's, and he's even having his wife enter into a secret lie that is a family cycle and pattern that is doing everything it can to steal, kill, and destroy the destiny and the purpose of this family. And the Bible said that Abimelech took Sarah thinking that she was Abraham's sister. And that night before he could lay his hands on her and violate her, this is what your Bible says, it said, and the Lord came to Abimelech in a dream and said to him, I love the subtlety of God. You're a dead man. Because of the woman that you've taken. And he looks out and he says, I did this out of the integrity of my heart. I didn't know. He had more integrity than Abraham had. And he looks out and he calls Sarah in and he says, now look, I didn't know that your brother or your husband or what, whatever this crazy thing y'all have got going on, I don't want to be in the middle of it. And he gives them silver and gold and sends them away. God intervenes again. God intervenes and breaks the pattern and the cycle, and you would think that it's over. You're not going to believe this. I'm, on, I'm almost where I want to be. I'm going somewhere, and I'm going to get there quick. But go to one more verse, Genesis 26. Abraham and Sarah, just as God promised. And by the way, that Abimelech said, get out of my house, and he sent her away, and then she got pregnant at 99 years old. She gets pregnant from Abraham. And the scripture said in Genesis 26, they had a son named Isaac and he married a girl named Rebecca who was extremely beautiful. And the son now begins to do, question, was Isaac born when they played those little tricks? When they lied? He wasn't even there. There was a cycle. There was a pattern, spiritual curse that was being passed down and propagated through. And I'm going to show you that in a moment. And so Isaac gets in a strange land, and he says to his wife, say that you're my sister, for I, there it is, I'm afraid. I'm making decisions out of fear instead of faith. It's a bad decision. 
God saved him too because God had the plan. They would have the son named Jacob that would become the nation of Israel. The point that I want to make today that there seems to be something possible about iniquity and sin that we can so establish a pattern and a cycle that it can be passed from father to son, from mother to daughter, to, from family to family, from generation to generation. And just as a generational curse can be passed under the new covenant that Jesus established on the cross of Calvary, he canceled all the curses and he says, when you receive my blood upon your life and when you receive my blood upon your family, I break these cycles. Just as addiction can be passed, so can sobriety. Just as brokenness can be passed, so can wholeness. Just as trauma can be passed, so can the power and the grace of God. It can be passed. And today we need to understand that what God has provided through Jesus Christ, what he has done on the cross, if sin and iniquity can be transferred from children to grandchildren, how much more can the blessing of faith, the blessing of worship, you're not wasting your time this morning, the blessing of honoring God and bringing your family to church and opening the Bible, every deed produces a seed. Every deed I do to draw closer to God, every deed produces a seed in the next generation. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that you can get notifications on new posts and live streams. Be sure to share this video with a friend. You never know how you can send the Word of God right when somebody needs to hear it. And you can use your social influence for good, for the glory of God. Thanks again. Share it with a friend. And I really appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.